Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Z, and today we are back with another Epirus campaign video. And I just wanted to say thank you to all of you recently. There's been a lot of support on the channel for this series, so we are of course carrying it on until the next patch update. Let's see how far we can get. I mean, we're going to get embroiled in a few different wars, I feel, especially if we take this land up here in the north. We've pretty much been playing like the the cat and mouse game up here in the north, and we're hoping that they will leave this siege because they don't border that area anymore. The problem that we do have is the fact that the old uh, score disky over here are, you know, right next to us. Let's go and have a look. There's the other settlement. They've got a settlement down there. We also need to have a look at all these Thracian tribes out here to see where they are. Um, so we're going to have a big border with the score disky, which playing on very hard and extreme mode. Likely they're going to exploit. We also got to have a border with the Tribali and the... Is that the Dental Arte? Yes, the Dental Arte. These guys shouldn't be too hard to take out. But uh, coming into this land here is not really something that's going to, you know, bring a lot of rewards. It's going to be very slow conquesting. So what we might do is leave an army up here to deal with that once we've taken out the Antigonids here. And just slowly make our way through rather than trying to go fast. And just slowly go through the Thracians. Really take it nice and slow uh, as well. Last time, of course, we were invaded by the Romans. What I'm going to do, though, is pop um, pop if I Festionas out of the city. What we're also going to do is when I get some money next turn, I'm going to pop in a spy to recruit a spy. The reason being is because I think a lot of this plague, obviously, we have spread the plague everywhere, which is terrible. <laughs> Not the best gameplay from me. I mean, I did it on purpose to, you know, deal with the Pionians, kind of. But uh, at the same time, maybe not the greatest of ideas I've ever had. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. We shall see. Oh, the Adrissians are all the way over here as well. Um, yeah, the Adrissians. The Antigonids have better para. Wow. I did not realize that. They've split the Maidy with uh, Philippopolis up here, too. Interesting. And Philippopolis is a minor city already. Wow, they've got a lot of population in there. Because when I play the Adrissians, Philippopolis is not exactly a massive city or one that, you know, is easy to upgrade. Um, so, yeah, in the north, we're going to try and get rid of all this plague. I mean, if anything, it's going to help out with the public order here because the people are going to die uh, in the most brutal sense of the word. Um... While we take the last two Pionians, that will leave these two massive rebel armies around. But that might even help us if we do get invaded by someone. And I really don't want to have to deal with them <laughs> at the minute. Unless they come and fight us. I don't want to fight them both. Um, Pella as well. We're going to try and get that spy in there at some point. So that... Um, because I think this plague's being spread back by Pionian spies. Um, and, of course, we want to try and get rid of the uh, plague over here, too. Now, I do want to garrison Cassandre, absolutely. But uh, the only option we have to garrison Cassandre right now is plagued units. And that's not the play, is it, my friends? <laughs> we are bringing Alexander back, our glorious commander. And I, Festionas, I've just popped him outside of the city just so that he gets the extra movement when we move off next turn. So where we go after Pionia, I don't 100% know yet. We'll just have to uh, probably retrain this army, see what we're doing uh, as well. But thank you to everyone who commented, you know, get the spies in the cities to get rid of the plagued other spies. I think that's a very good idea. And of course, some people commenting that I should just gather the troops up together, like uh, combine the troops rather than retraining everyone the reason why i don't tend to do that is first of all because with a general in ras you get so much more movement points than you do for a single unit i'll try and show that right now so this is you here that's his movement if i press on you look how much less movement there is between the two it's a lot different oh that's actually you after being in a city. So I need to find a general that's outside a city. All of them are actually moving. But yeah. Um, with the generals there is so much more movement points. On top of that. 
I don't like to just send units drips and drabs, especially when you get to this size of an empire, because it really does become very confusing what's happening. So uh, I'd prefer to send them all together. I don't think it makes ma much difference either, especially if we do a load of conquest. We've got a really damaged army and we come back and leaving like a half stack out in the open can be pretty, pretty scary. So uh, that's why I prefer to do it, especially on the very hard and extreme mode. We've found that there's been a lot of armies, hasn't there? Uh, but anyway, I have waffled on for a full five minutes at the start of this video, guys. So I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> but let's press the end turn, guys. Let's see where we get to. Let's see what happens with Pioneer here. That's the most important thing right now. So let's see. Okay, so the Maidy want an alliance. I mean, with our lack of allies at the minute, they are actually at war with the Antigonids. That is good for us. So with our massive lack of alliances, I'm going to accept it from anyone. To be honest, we've got a full 100 reputation too. Oh, so we will accept that. We do already have trade agreements. Let's give them map information. How about like, they're only modest wealth, so they don't have much to give. But no, they don't want that. <laughs> and our little scheme worked up in the north. Ah, and we lost, uh, we lost the plague in Bylazora. That's fantastic. We've still got it in a few other places. We've got it in Scoopy. Uh, what I want to do is potentially get another garrison troop up in Scoopy right now because they've got such a little garrison. Uh, I will go through all of the cities and adjust their tax rates at some point too. But you can see they have now come north. So our gambit is going very well. We're going to auto resolve that 48 men. That's not a problem at all. And in Nasos, I mean, it has the plague. So is it worth exterminating here? I think so. It'll also make it a lot happier. So let's go with that. Who do we want to... I mean, the Pelopides and Hoplites, 25 of them. Can you support that at all? No, you cannot. Uh, well, let's combine a couple of you. Let's see if 63... There we go. That's enough. Then we're going to go straight across here. And the bloody Pionians. <laughs> AI going to AI, my friends. I feel like it's, it's almost an exploit doing this, but... I'm not really doing anything wrong, am I? All I'm doing is just taking land and going north. And if they're not going to react to that, that's not a problem. I will keep the tavern because it gives you a half a percent uh, public order due to health. And a public order bonus and happiness bonus. Absolutely worth it. Let's plop the sewers in there as well. We are building the sewers in a couple of these areas, aren't we? Bylazora is going to become our northern... Um, recruitment hub along with Pella as well, which is fantastic. And Pella still does have the plague. Let's have a look then at the damage the plague has been doing. We're now making 42,000 a turn. We've got rioting in Bokiria. Not a place that we want rioting, so let's put it down. A couple of settlements besieged, and yeah, settlements affected literally every single one. Only 87 soldiers lost, though, uh, which isn't too bad. Burger has lost it. Pella still has it. Thessalonica doesn't have it. So these units now should be okay. Let's just yes. pop this guy out. Yes, he doesn't have the plague. So let's go into Cassandra. That's fantastic. Now, Scoopy, Cirrus. Yeah, so the, the places that have the plague now, we've just got Scoopy, Pella, and Nysos. Let's make sure we pop this spy Maximum number of spies in that settlement. Egyptians have now uh, emerged. So when we do our um, toggle fog of war on turn 20, I cannot wait to have a look at those guys. Depending on whether they keep on spawning troops, I think they've fixed that, but I'm not 100% certain. We may have to destroy them <laughs> through the console at some point. Um, but for now, should be okay. Right, let's pop into Ambrakia with our army. Anyone we can combine. Yeah, these guys, so we don't need to train everyone. These guys, you go in there, you go in there, and then the rest of them can get trained. The Deuteroy are all fooked. How about these guys? Let's go with that. There we go. That should be good, and that should allow us to train, retrain everyone in this turn. Everyone but the Thurioforoi, really. Anyone else we can combine? I don't think so. 
It's a little bit unfortunate. Everyone but the 304, right? Well, while we're here, then, we might as well train another unit. What do we need? We've got four of those. We've got a load of those. We've got some nice Athamanians. I think we go for another 304, right? They are a good unit uh, for our flanking and for assaulting cities. So let's do that. Did we retrain everyone in here? We did, I believe, apart from the cavalry, of course. But they are quite healthy at the minute. We'll pop into a Festionas' army. There we go. And where do we want to go with Ifestionas? That's the one question. Because we kind of have everything covered up here. We don't have anyone attacking the Antigonids around there. So that might be the play. I think that is the play. And then we can send Alexander down south. He's been fighting in the north for so long. I think it's time he turned his eyes to the south. To all of these massive Antigonid armies that they've got down there. So, yeah, let's go for that. Let's get Ifestionas up into the north. We'll swap around our armies. I don't mind doing that at all. Um, and Ifestionas' army is okay. It's not going to be amazing against Thracians. But it's not an awful army by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and the more experience it gets, the better it's going to be against these Thracian boyos. We may even reinforce it with a few of the boys. And we got these guys in here. And what else do we want to do? I think we're doing all right in terms of troops, all that sort of thing. I mean, we're making an obscene amount of money that we did have somewhere that's ready to upgrade. Was it here? It's a Kinthos. What about this? Yes, it was this. So let's do that. Uh, we didn't get the spy in there, but it doesn't look like there is any more spies in there now. So I'm just going to leave it for now and hopefully the plague will be gone. Pella has been absolutely ravaged by the plague. 3,000 population is insane uh, for Pella, of course. Uh, and everywhere around is pretty rich. So nice little area. Let's now look to see whether we want to train anything else. I personally think the one thing we should train is a few garrison troops. And that's about it. So maybe a couple more archers in there. And in Pella, we are training a garrison troop in Pella, so that's fine. So I think that's good for now. Potentially in here, let's go for an Ambrachiote. And uh, that should be good. Right then, let's do our building, my friends. Uh, let's build in Korkira. Let's go for an academy. Let's get these generals nicely trained up. It will also allow any children that grow up in the city to have better traits to start with uh, and start their life in a better way. Oricon has some good buildings we can build now, to be honest. I'm thinking we go for public baths, so that extra population growth is going to be so useful. Hmm. Or we could go for grain imports, flat half a percent. I think it's half a percent for either, so we'll go for the public health instead. Thereby, Pathetides can get a sewer. We've seen how valuable those can be. Lucas, not really worth building anything there for now. Dion, a minor city. I think we go for the academy here too because we have a general in there. Falana, let's go for the market, nice and cheap. Tricker, let's go for the market too. And then Argos Arresticon over here. Let's also go for the academy. I know it costs a lot of money for the academy, but uh, it's definitely going to be worth it in the long run. Um, so yeah, very good. Very good, my friends. Let's see now where we get up to after this end turn. I am going to just look at all my agents to see where they are, guys. I'm going to do that off camera, though, so you guys don't need to watch me waffle on for any longer than I need to. Oh, wow. I think, I'm not going to lie, I think the Pionians here, because normally it takes them two turns to build the siege equipment for the AI, but I genuinely think the spy has opened the gate. So we're not going to destroy them next turn. So likely we're going to have to actually fight them. Now, I'm going to play it just in case they've got a ram. But likely they'll have multiple rams anyway, even if they do. So it might be futile, but we'll see. I'll cut it out if it's, uh, if it's just stupid and no reason. So let's have a look, guys. Let's get in the battle and let's see. Did the spy open the gate? So no, they just attacked on the first turn. That's the first time I've seen the AI do that for quite some time. Now, it's very unlikely that we're going to be able to burn all of those rams. But uh, let's see, guys. Let's see. Well, clear, clear defeat, guys. But at least 
we know that the Pioneers will only have one settlement left after next turn, which will be great for us. So let's get back on the campaign map. So I heard the unmistakable sound of someone coming of age. Yes, come on. I was literally just thinking then I was going to say that we need some more generals um, or governors, at least. Maybe not generals. Um, what do we have? I Demos in here has got two influence, but nothing else. He's from Pasaron. Slow, charismatic, but spiritless. Uh, venal, individualistic, and optimistic. He's green, well supplied. He's an unwilling humanist, so he does not want to study history, sociology, geography, economics, or philosophy. This man doesn't really care about them. His interest lies elsewhere, and he can't be bothered to learn one of these subjects. <laughs> Not the greatest of, for anything, really, this guy, unfortunately, Ademos. Um, so let's let's send him to govern, but probably somewhere that's not quite as important as other places. I think probably Heraclea Linkestis. Let's go for that one. I think he's in Pissaran, isn't he? You can go all the way there. Let's get him in there. That's good. I mean, he can govern. He's got two influence, so that will help with public order. Uh, then we've got Eumenes. Oh, and wow, this guy is fantastic. Wow. Well, so 3 1 3. He could be an amazing governor or anything. He's insensitive ruler in the pink. Great for generals. Gourmet of life. Inferior engineer. He's bloody. This man enjoys the sight of blood. He's a command talent. Interested in linguistics. He's just, he's just amazing. Wow. What a character. Well, I think you are going to form the backbone for a new army, my friend. So what I'm going to do is for now, where do we have an academy? We've got one in Ambrakia. Do we have one in Finike? No, we do not. So I am going to send him to Ambrakia to get some good traits while we train a brand new army. So let's train a brand new army for him. We're getting those areas. Let's see. I'm willing to go for a couple of Deuteroi while we're waiting for these Hippodromes to finish. Then we can get some Thessalian Cavalry. Anything else? God damn, still got the Plague Impeller. Who would have known? Who would have known? But we do need another General to go into Pella at some point. Um, but obviously, we'd like to wait until the Plague is done there. We do have Basalios here. He's got three management. But this city is very good. Tyrone is a good city, so we'll keep that. The Antigonus did siege us down there, but that's not a problem. Death stalks the land. It's just Pella, Nysos, and Scoopy now. So Nysos is this one. Uh, Scoopy down here still has it. 5%, so it's not going to go away for a little while. Agent detected by the Scordisci in Nysos. Oh, well. Well, we will do that battle in a second, but let's go through everything else. Of course, we're being sieged. And the Aetolian League did siege down Thermon, but I think we can probably beat that. I mean, actually, maybe not. We've only got one hoplite unit, but it'll be a bloody fight for them, no doubt, if they do want to try and take that down. And Barakia got that, which is fantastic. Ah, let's go for the second level of the Dioscuri. Two bonus to experience there, which is amazing. Antigonia Chionia. Let's also go for the academy here. Let's get our generals and governors really good because that's going to help our growth. That's going to help everything else out as well. Go for a market and Iginion. Uh, Stimbara got that, which, yes, we want to keep on pushing with this because it is Paeonian fortified so we can get Ronfoy Foroy. Same thing with Bailazora. Let's smash in that Epirote recruitment level two. What does that allow us to get? That allows us to get some good units like the Thracian Agrianian Infantry, which is a really, really good um, javelin unit. And they are armor-piercing with their secondary weapon, which I think in this case is the melee attack. But we shall see. It may be the javelins. But they are a very good Peltast unit. What else do we have here? We've got Paeonian Cavalry, which is a decent cavalry unit. Better than our Prodromoi by far. Thracian Slingers, Agrianian Archers, which is a pretty darn good archer unit. 160 range and 10 missile attack. That's actually pretty insane, I'm not going to lie. So uh, very good indeed. Where's our other armies then? We've got Ifestionas. He's coming all the way across here. Do they have any siege equipment yet? No, they don't. And then you are going to move very soon indeed. 
Right then. Fantastic. Well, we are in a very good position. Let's do this battle then. The Siege of Idarva. Plagued as it is. We've got the Romford Foroy, the Getic Light Cavalry, Light Infantry. Two Getic Light Infantry and the Thracian Romphi Foroy. Should not be too hard. We're just going to make sure we destroy the Romphi Foroy pretty quickly. So let's get in the fight, guys. Let's see how we do. So here we go. We have broken through the gates, my friend. The Getic Light Infantry looks like they may be coming down here, which would be great for us because then I can go and flank them. These guys, put your phalanx down, my friends. Put your phalanx down. They are turning around. You guys too. Let's stick the phalanx down. Let's get you off guard mode for now. And halt. There we go. Get you off guard mode too. Halt. There we go. And these guys can charge back into them. Here comes the Getix. Good. Let's go then. Which way are you going to go? You're going to go the right way. Fantastic, my friends. Very good indeed. I don't think we need to use these guys, but... We'll probably bring this unit in anyway. Where's the Trollians? I want to bring them in, definitely. Uh, get in, my friends. Get in. Horse archers, not necessarily needed, but we may use them to try and get the Romphi Foroi off the town square. Guys, no, 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 no. Keep going. Keep going. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Uh, can you face that way? Would be good. Face that way, maybe? Not that way? Okay. They're both just facing the wrong way. Like, you can face diagonally, guys. You don't need to be at right angles. <laughs> but it's okay. I don't think we'll... We've not even lost a single man against the Getic Light Infantry now. So, uh, yeah. We're in a pretty good position. I feel like one charge is going to be enough. Do not want to lose Pyros, though. Good General. Also, one of our... Is he our faction heir? Or is the other Pyros our faction heir? I can't quite remember. Oh, here comes the Romphi 4, right? Not... Not someone we want to uh, deal with. I don't mind. Uh, we're going to take a bit of a jabby to the face here, I think. Oh, come on, the boys. Let's go. Oh, jabbies. Don't stop. Why do you stop? Why do you stop? Don't stop. Don't stop. Won't stop. Can't stop, my friends. Well, Trollians, you definitely get round. We'll send you two. So you two will group you together. Go, go, go. Go, guys. Go. Uh, do we want to send... I mean, I'll send some of those guys just in case. Don't think it's going to make much difference. How many men? Yeah, we've hardly lost any men fighting the Getic Light Infantry. Fantastic. If they want to charge in all the way with those boys, that'd be amazing. Keep coming, men. Keep coming. Get there. No, you're going to go that way, are you? Go that way, then. Here comes the Romfe Foroi. Have you guys even fired at all? Go, 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 go. Took a bit of a jabby to the face there, I think. Everyone fight them. See, there we go. That's better. Now you're getting the right way. Kill them all. Kill them all. Oh, the Romphi Foroi are not too happy. Let's uh, let's pop back around this way. Actually, do we, do we take a charge to the face? Because they are not a very good unit in terms of cavalry resistance. That's the one weakness that they have. The general's all the way back there. That's going to be amazing for us, especially if they turn around. Look how fast they are, though. You can see the fast-moving trait. It's actually insane. Okay, that charge didn't seem to do much. So let's get out. Let's get out, see whether they chase us. They probably will, which is a bit of a problem. You guys, you two get off that and get all the way up there. That would be great. Same with the horse archers. If you could get up there, that would be amazing. Uh, you guys, let's go. Let's see if we can deal with this Romphi Foroi then. You guys get around. I hope they turn around. Oh, they are. Oh, fantastic. Well, we don't even really need to uh, to fight them that much anymore. We can just uh, can just wait. Go that way. Come on, Pathing. You know what you need to do, my friends. Here we go. The Trollians and the Thurio Foroi. All we need to do now is just stand on the town square for two minutes while we hold them here. Not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. Let's -a go. It's a me, Zedio. Let's -a go. Killy, kill, kill, killy. Killy the Romfe for Roy. I thought we just war cried. Did we not war cry? I'm sure I just pressed war cry. Not gonna lie. <laughs> These poor Getic Light infantry are screwed. You guys, just get up there. Just go, go, go. You guys, you're just going to block the way. 
so that we can make make sure they don't get through because it looks like they really want to get through. General, let's pop you up here. And this fight down here is fine. Apparently, the Getic Light Infantry is starting to win now, which is just insane to me. They're an awful unit. I suppose it's partly the difficulty as well. Go, go, go. You guys get there. Well, I can't press on that other unit. Let me press on you. God damn. Just don't. There's like about three men. You don't need to stop. You don't need to stop, my friends. You do not need to stop. Get there. General can go there. Good. What are they doing? Ah, the Runfoy 4 a fighting to the death. Nice. That's what we like to see. Kill them all then. Kill them all. And then we can deal with the Getic Light Infantry. Let's speed this up slightly. Don't need to take so long on it anymore, do we? There we go. Got you guys. Go deal with them. Can you guys chase them, please? Rather than just, like, walking? Like, who are you fighting? One single guy there. Yeah, don't worry about him. Where is the Trollians? Trollio boys, get in there. You should absolutely shred these boys. Phalanx down, phalanx down. And we shall stop them coming through. And that should be a nice little victory for us, my friends. Victory! There we go, guys. The Getic Light Infantry did run away. 123 to 274. I think a pretty decent result. I'm not going to lie. Let's get back on that campaign map. Same thing applies to Idava here. Has still got the plague, so we're going to massacre the population, unfortunately, for them. Um, and yeah, take that back. I think, honestly, if I'm going to sit in here for a turn to see what happens. We do need to destroy this. That's their last area. But, of course, they've got some pretty darn good armies. What I might do, though, is just pop out. Skordisky are just chilling around here, too. No mercenaries. Are you kidding me? What about over here? There are some here. Thracian Noble Cavalry, definitely worth it. Getic Light Infantry, probably not so much. Hmm. And we have to go all the way around to there to pop into another area. Or pop here. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. We've got some better units now. Celtic Swordsman. And we don't have any money left. That's fine. Celtic Swordsman will definitely help, though. They are a good unit. Nice. Got some decent units in the army now in case they do decide to siege us down. And I hope they do. That is what I would like to see happen. Is them siege us down. Do we have enough money to build anything? Unfortunately not. What is the temple? The temple of Dioscuri in here. Interesting. That's not really... Aphrodite. I'll take Aphrodite. But Dioscuri, not so much. Here we go. Temple of Aphrodite here too in Scoopy. Scoopy, Scoopy, Scoopy. Well, what I think I'll do, guys, is I think I'm going to go around and just check all of the uh, all of the tax rates, and I'll just explain what I'm going to do. So, for example, we'll go here, what I'm going to do is bump that up to the highest tax rate it can while they still have positive growth, because I want them all growing at all times, these cities. So that's what I'm going to do, pretty much put them up to the happiest they can be with growth. So, for example, here at Antigonea Chionia, we are not going to put it up. Even though I could put it on high tax rate, that's minus 1.5% growth. We want to keep it in the positive if possible, but in these areas as high as possible, even if it's negative. So that's the way I'm going to do it, guys, just so you know. So let's go through everything now, and I'll see you after the end turn. So we have a candidate for adoption. I'm going to decline this one because he's not great uh hit points of management though actually we'll take that because we do need a manager and i'll probably send him to pella now um so i don't know where he was oh he was in uh, thessalonica but yeah we send him to pella in terms of the tax rates guys a little tip for you you do want to change this and adjust it every few turns maybe every 10 turns or so just in case because for example well bylazor is not a good example because he's got plague have a look at burger though five percent uh population growth here seems insane but you can see one percent there is from slavery because we enslaved an area nearby those surrounding areas will get this slavery bonus to population growth 
So if you leave it on a really high tax rate, say it was happy enough to be at high, and it was only on 2% or something, we'd come back and it maybe was on zero, so we'd have to put it down to get the growth going or whatever you want to do. If you want to keep it on negative growth just for the money, you can do as well. That's not a problem. Um, so yeah, you do want to check that all the time because if you are enslaving settlements, your population growth rate is going to change quite dramatically. Of course, on top of that, with buildings and everything you're building, you do want to keep checking it as well. So let's, uh, that's just a little tip for you guys. You don't want to just leave it and leave it there forever. So Bylazorus still has the plague and so does Idava. And Pella finally! Finally does not have the plague. Oh, glorious, glorious, glorious. Fantastic, my friends, fantastic. We've got a few people coming in. So Ferai and Larissa, we've got these guys. Uh, Larissa is there. So let's have a look. You come through this way. You come up this way as well. And I do want to check, did we get the... Uh... Oh, my God, guys. It's time. It's time. Let's pop one of those in straight away. And then I think Ferai... No, one more turn until the Hippodrome is done in Pharsalos. Amazing. That is fantastic. So in here as well, we want to build that because I believe here we can get the Thessalians too. Yes, this is going to be our cavalry recruiting area. What a fantastic area to come into. Uh, we've got nothing else in there, do we? Got construction. Ah, we got Pasaran upgraded now to a large city. One of our first large cities. But it's actually got negative population growth, which is not ideal. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to start really ramping up some of these. Maybe have to get grain imports as well to sustain this. Demetrius is upgraded too, which is excellent. Because um, we can build this up to being... Seven management here. That's fantastic. So, glorious. We shall check all that in a second. What we're going to do, though, is knock that guy back. Knock this guy back. And go straight for Heraclea Sintike. What did the Paeonians do in the north? They ran away, actually. What is that army, though? Do we think we can beat that? I don't think so. Where is their second army, though? That's what scares me. Probably hiding in some trees somewhere. But where are the spots? There's a spot. There's no spots down here that they can actually hide in. I am very worried about fighting that army, though. Let's have a look at it properly. So, what do we have? It's pretty much just noble cavalry. They've only got one unit of... It's just all cavalry. Could we beat that army then? If that's all cavalry. I don't know. I don't know. We might have to get another another couple of mercenaries. I feel like we go for it though. We've not had any battles this episode. Like big ones. So I do want to of course leave you guys with some good, good battles. Let's see whether a Greek hoplite is enough. It actually is more than enough to stay happy in there. And we'll come down. We'll move our spy out of the way. Spy! Spy! There we go. And you can go back to surveying the Scordisci over here. That was the best place, I think, because you could see both settlements. There we go. And, yeah, we'll come down. So we will attack them in a second. We'll do that in a second. Uh, let's move everyone else. You are sieging down Heraclea Sintike, which is good. And uh, what do we have over here? Nothing much. And now that we can move out with Alexander, let's do so. The thing is down here, though, what are we going to do? That's the question. That is the, <laughs> That really is the question because... <sighs> God damn it, man. <laughs> just like this area is just fucking mess. Like, why are all these... Like, why is Athens here? Why are you here, Athens? There is no need for your armies to be there just blocking the way. You absolute imbeciles, honestly. Well, let's see if we can pop. Can we go on the boat, please? <laughs> there we go. Where could we get dropped off? We can get dropped off there, which is actually fine, because then we can attack them, and then we'll have to move next turn. Let's pop back into that port. So at least we managed to knock them out of the way. We can't get to Naupactos at all. 
What I might do is attack Ellis because I want to come across and take Olympia and Ellis and all that sort of stuff anyway. So they were going to be our next target. So I might attack Ellis just so we can get through and take now Pactos. And then I don't think that we need to worry about this area because we're just going to block everyone from coming past. Which is kind of funny, but that should be good. So yeah, we've moved all the armies. Let's do this battle then, guys. A bit nervous for this one. Especially with our past experiences with the Romphophora and the Thracian Noble Cavalry, which are insane units. First though, let's just check that there are no more mercenaries available. There are not. So let's go. Men, this battle is inevitable, but victory hangs in the balance. Act like sons of Achilles, and victory will be within El Gras. And at the last, brave sons of Alexander, I say this. Strength and glory to you all! Yes, glory! So, it is just a fully cavalry army, and unfortunately it's very tree-y around here. And I'm assuming they're all just going to be on top of this hill, because the AI loves to do that. So, <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. I'm hoping we can just tank their charges on our front lines here. We'll have our units in behind, plus the Getic Light Spearmen. So there we go. Make sure all of these guys are on fire at will. Let's have you guys there too. So let's uh, group up all of those guys. Let's group you guys. We'll have the Trollians in here as well. And my cavalry can just kind of chill out behind. I'm going to use the Horse Archers to the best of our ability. Very compact formation, of course. But yeah, of course, they're on. They're all, all all up on the hill over here. They've got a very wide formation, unlike ours. But that's not a problem. We are just going to walk towards them, guys, and let's see what we can do. God damn, are those Thracian slingers, um, are they armor piercing? No, they just absolutely ruined our Getic light, cav uh, light spearmen or whatever they're called. Absolutely ruined them. At least our archers now can fire back, which is good for us. And like I say, they've got hardly any infantry. It's all cavalry, so we've got to be very wary about our flanks here. But uh, let's speed it up. Let's see where we get to. Bit of cut down trees over here. You can see that. Look at them absolutely shredding our units here. So let's be a little bit more aggressive. Let's move forward. We need to get our Trollians up here too. Get you there. Cavalry. Let's go straight up there. And let's just make sure that we are protecting our flanks. Come on, guys. I know it's a lot of skirmish cavalry. They've got the noble cavalry as well. But we just need to try and force them to engage us. That's the main thing. To engage our phalanx lines somehow. Going to be difficult to force them to do that. But uh, that's what we're going to have to try and do at least. Is force them into attacking us here. Um, and I think we can do that with our horse archers and with the rest of our archers. So let's get them in phalanx mode now. And let's keep coming forward. There we go. You units can get like here. And you can probably fire your javis from there too. Got these guys. We've got our horse archers. Yeah, let's keep on firing uh, and just trying to force them into engaging us here. We should be able to get a nice jabby throw off as well. So uh, let's do that. And I think a lot of their cavalry, once we've engaged in melee, their cavalry is going to start engaging too. So keep coming forward, guys. Keep coming forward. Let's go. There we go. Javelins are being thrown now. So we should be starting to get engaged in the combat. Let's just move forward, just walk forward, and then we'll probably halt. Halt! There we go. Just take the charge. That was not really much of a charge. There we go. Firing our javelins now. It's good. Can't really see what's going on. What are they? Hippocontisti. Uh, cavalry. Let's try and get you, like, up this way. Try and protect our left flank. Here they come, though. Pionian cavalry are on the way. 
Good for us. Good, good, good. Should be charging straight into one of those uh, phalanxes, which is great for us. As long as we hold strong with the phalanx, we should be okay. Looks like the left flank is the flank that's taking all of the meat grinderiness. So where's our general? Let's rally. Just make sure all our men are happy for now. Uh, let's just come through this way if we can. Wow, that's a bit overrun, I'm not going to lie. Let's uh, see if we can get around and into the back of them. Oh, I didn't even see that there was a unit there. Uh, but, oh my god, our phalanx is just getting absolutely just overrun here, guys. Absolutely overrun. You guys get in the fight. You guys get in the fight. You guys need to come over here and get in the fight. Because, goddamn, we are getting overrun. And I cannot see where the other threats are coming from. Let's uh, make sure banners are locked on so I can actually see what's going on. There we go. Pionian Cavalry, Noble Cavalry. I feel like we should do a good job here, but this is just a big fucking melee. Let's turn around and try and get the Hippocontistae if we can. There we go. All our men now. If we can kill that Noble Cavalry, though, that'd be excellent. There we go. They're just running absolute rampant, their cavalry. Jesus Christ. This is chaos. Just absolute chaos, my friends. Um, looks like we may lose this. I'm not going to lie. Their cavalry just seems to be... A bit too strong. Here we go. Mass route. Mass route, my friends. Mass route. So we've routed a couple of their cavalry units. So let's see what we can do now. Looks very much like... Yeah, look at that. They've still got 800 men. That's too much for us to deal with right now. Jesus Christ. Especially all of these men that are routing. Trollians are not even in the fight. There we go. Yeah, they just somehow just overran our, all of our units. Like, literally just ran through the phalangites. I guess they... I mean, they were in the, the fattest formation I could really get away with without exposing our flanks. So, yeah, unfortunately, Pyros, you're going to have to... You're going to have to leave, my friend. You're going to have to leave. You guys get the hell out of Dodge. Looks like you're going to be routing very soon anyway. So, let us run... Just run, guys. Just run. <laughs> run away. I do not want my general to die. Please run. They're, the problem is their cavalry is uh, is fast moving. So they're going to be able to catch Pyros and everything. Hopefully, you know, we can uh, escape. What I might do is leave these Thracian nobles behind and uh, try to get Pyros away. There we go. They should route soon as well. Problem here is, like, withdrawing. We have to withdraw all the way to the other side of the map. So we're just going to get chased down and completely and utterly n annihilated. That happened so quickly. Like, the phalanx just crumbled. Maybe I was a bit ambitious. We hardly killed anyone as well. Like, they've killed 1,000. We've killed 300. This is the power of the Thracian armies, guys. This is what I'm on about when I say the Thracians are some of the power most powerful rosters in the game. Um, you know, Seleucids is probably the most powerful roster in the game. Um, obviously, Rome is slightly different, but uh, yeah. I really don't want to lose Pyros. This is the main thing. Anything but Pyros. Try and get them. Try and get them. I want them to stop so that we can get Pyros out of here. All the way to the map edge, which is where? All the way over there, is it? Withdraw, please. Withdraw. That's where you're going. Okay. As long as you go there, that's okay. Why can you not catch the Pionian Cavalry, for God's sake? <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I'll see you at the end, guys. And hopefully, Pyros has managed to escape. But I guess we'll find out. So, Pyros is going to escape. He's run for his lives, my friend. <laughs> Our whole army has been annihilated. What a battle. Terrible. Terrible. Yeah, courage and virtue, I mean, pretty much overrun. I think we need a lot more phalangites if we're going to beat an army like that. Jesus, that's going to be the worst defeat of the whole campaign. Wow, Thracian units. Turns out, pretty darn strong, guys. <laughs> so, uh, that's why we were running north when we were trying to take out Pionia rather than trying to fight them. Wow, what a battle. And we retreated all the way north. That's not the one, is it, guys? That is not the one. Uh, we have no movement left either. Well, we're going to have to wait there for a turn or two to see what happens. Well, I think uh, that means that poor uh, Eumenus is not going to get an army uh, for some time now because we're going to have to rebuild Pyrrhus' army. 
Now, if we get to level two here, what does that allow us to get? Yeah, um, not the greatest troops, but uh, I think we need to get to level three and then start building up our infrastructure here. This area too, Stoby as well, could be a good one because it's got population growth. It's going to be a large city soon. So I think let's go for Stoby too. Yeah, there we go. Thracians... And then, yeah, lots of Thracians. Good. Yes, Stoby. So Stoby, Bailazora, and Stimbara are going to be our Thracian recruitment grounds. Down here, these three down here, we've got Larissa, Ferai, and Pharsalos as the uh, Thessalian cavalry grounds, which we will be taking. These guys can come all the way up north. And yeah, all good, I think, my friends. Now Pella is okay. We can go to very high tax rate. Wow. Um, ah, the Antigonids have a spy in there. That's okay. Plague seems to have uh, died down a little bit, doesn't it, my friends? Just a little bit from uh, last time, where pretty much every single place had plague. So let's start building back up this army. Let's go for some more Ambrachiotes in those two areas. We're going to get some more... Thessalians, of course, over here. In Ferai, let's go for some Deuteroi. We can fill out the ranks with a few Deuteroi. And, of course, the Thessalians, too. Up here in Pella, who do we want to recruit? I think we'll recruit some Aphamanians because they are quite good. And they're good against them. Um, they're definitely going to be good against Thracians as well. So, yeah, I think that's all we can do, really do for now with the training. So let's have a look at what we want to build. Passar run again. In fact, let's go from the bottom this time. Uh, and let's build in Dardanicon Forikon, which is this one. Build the road so we can get away from here as quick as possible. Sue is in there. Cassandrea over here, which is actually a really good settlement. Uh, making 3,000 a turn. Wow, that's pretty darn decent. I'm not going to lie. Let's go for the Shrine to Aphrodite just to get a bit of extra flat half a percentage growth. Burger, let's go for the land clearances. And over here in Nysos, not the greatest of cities, is it? I think we want to fortify this region, really, because we've got the Scordisci and we've got all the Thracians around here. So, honestly, going for the stone wall is not too bad. It also will give us some lore, which is going to give us 28 gold. I mean, it's not it's not amazing. It's not awful at the same time. Uh, what are we at? Zikinthos out here. Again, I'd love to go for one of those trade buildings, but let's go for Aphrodite 2 to get just that flat growth. Heraclea Linkestis, let's go for the Academy. Let's try and get this guy some good traits, even though he's awful. And his Skarna up here, let's go for the Trader. And that's about it, unless we've got any more temples we can build. Anywhere we can here, but what temple is it? Just happiness in Oinadai, probably not worth it. I would like us trying to Aphrodite wherever we can so yeah let's just go for the shrine to aphrodite and damale ah oh, what a what a uh, what a battle there an absolute crushing defeat my friends <laughs> some of you though i know some of you like to see a defeat every now and then it, it makes it seem like it's not not really easy and to be honest guys this campaign has not been easy <laughs> i mean you've seen it has not been an easy campaign by any stretch of the imagination in fact i uh, you know this campaign definitely in my opinion been harder than the seleucid one and the seleucid one the thing is with the seleucid one it's difficult in a different way um so while we press the enter and i'll just talk to you about that it's very difficult in a different way you know the seleucid one is difficult in terms of campaign management in terms of you know using the resources you have and all that jazz and doing you know what you uh, what you need to do um yeah, and it's difficult to manage your borders as the Seleucids because you've got so many enemies and you need to build so many armies in so many different areas. But the thing is with the Seleucid campaign, like, you can lose half your settlements and you've still not lost the campaign. So there's never really that jeopardy of, like, dying. But there is the jeopardy of, you know, losing land, losing huge swathes of land and trying to, you know, scramble to manage your campaign and manage your land and all that sort of thing. Whereas this has just been brutally difficult in terms of the enemies we've fought, the amount of armies they've been able to throw. Oh, now they're sieging that down. Well, I think we're going to have to send Ifestionas north, aren't we? 
And another guy. This guy's 26. Bright, magnetic, and vigorous. We 100% will take him. So let's go for that. More death in Bylazora Bilo again. And it doesn't look like there's a spy in there. So, oh, god damn. Come on, Bylazora. Plague everywhere. We need this to end. Um, but yeah. Perseus has a cook. That's okay. It's not a problem. Pharsalos, let's keep on going with... Ah, we can get Thessalians in fast loss now too. Fantastic. Pella got the Athamanians. Good. Very nice indeed. Right then, well, we need to take Heracleus and TK. Then I think we need to march north and kill these Paeonian armies. Either that or take out Damastion. If we could snipe Damastion before they can siege us down, I think we'll be in a good position there. I mean, we need to take that. We probably need to come back and attack Captain Asandros just so he'll run away. Um, and then we need to march north. Whether we've got enough movement for that or not, I don't know. How is the movement from here? Yeah, probably not quite enough to get all the way north in time. So it, it looks like it may be... Hmm. Uh, you and Pella, could you reach there? You can do, so we will save you for uh, the next turn. So it looks like if Pyrrhos in the north dies, looks like um, Eumenes is going to be governing very soon. Now, which was the area that was so rich? You are very rich, Cassandre. You're rich as well. You've got a general. You haven't. Well, we'll send a general to Cassandre because that's a, a rich... Cassandrea, should I say? Because that's a really rich one. So we'll send Coerilos up to Cassandrea. Um, you are there. Oh, they uh, they left they left the door open, my friends. Fantastic. We can actually siege down now. Pactos now. Glorious! Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. Right, let's do this battle of Heracleus in TK. I'm really tempted to auto resolve, but honestly, we need to we need to retain the amount of men that we have. We really do. So I'm gonna try and use the mercenary phalangites and the archers as much as possible in this battle against Chal two units of Chalcospedes. Mainly because I want to preserve the life of the rest of my units in here that are nice and healthy right now. So let's get going, my friends. So we tried to bait them out, but the, the pathing has just fucked, <laughs> fucked us here. And somehow the Chalcospedes managed to catch us. Ah, <laughs> oh, well. What can you do? What can you do, my friends? When the passing is like it is... What can you do? Hopefully, though, I mean, we've got this little trap here. And I was hoping that they would be able to fire into there. It looks like you can. So maybe fire. We'll put you on guard mode. You on guard mode, too, so you don't chase after the enemy. We definitely don't want that. But all our spearmen up here, too, to try and deal with that one. But I think we do want to drag them in the trap, if possible. So are they just going to go back? Looks like they're getting killed, but uh, looks like they are just going to come back. Oh, it's very, very frustrating, not going to lie. Let's uh, try and use these guys again, and let's see if we can finally bait them off here. Okay, looks like it may have worked for once. So that's amazing. What we need to do now is just get all these guys across ASAP. Same with these guys. Just get in the back there just to block them off. Make sure they can't get back to the town square. And I don't really mind how many losses we take now as long as we are, you know, shredding them. So these guys, yeah, should be firing down on the enemy. These guys, once they're around the corner, should get a nice little shot off too. So very good. And hopefully we can just squish them and stay on the town square for long enough. I think they're a bit confused as to what to do now, but that's fine. I'm going to just send these guys in there just to make sure... I really ideally want to fight them with these guys. They are the main unit we want to actually fight them with. Just stay back then. Stay back for now. Keep these guys here. You need to come to there and see if you can deal with them. We're going to come. They're just confused. And if they want to just chill like that, I don't mind at all. That is not a problem. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can get these guys in in time. Just to hold the line here and stop them pushing through. Because that's what they love to do, isn't it? Push through. Let's keep you off guard mode. There we go. These guys have just gone mental. That's okay. 
Phalanx, please, guys. Phalanx. There we go. That's what it's all about. Come on, the boys. Phalanx, please, guys. Phalanx. There we go. That should be better. This unit over here just does not know what to do and is just getting shot to death, which is excellent for us. I don't mind that at all. Uh, where are these guys? Yeah, these are the guys taking the damage up here. And now we just need to wait 1 minute 40. Cheesing once again, my friends. Cheesy victories all around. There we go, guys. Another cheesy siege victory <laughs> out of the way. So let's end the battle there. We lost 94, but most of the men that we lost were Mercenary Phalangites, Hoplites, and some of the Thurio Foroi as well. So not too bad at all. Not too bad at all, my friends. So let's enslave this population. Reason being, it does actually border Pella. Uh, or does it just border Thessalonica? I think it might... Mm, it's close to Pella, so I want to bump up the population of Pella. Look at that, 2,800. Jeez, that is awful. <laughs> this is a generic Thracian roster, so let's see what we can get from this. Just the standard run for Foray and Thracian Noble Cavalry. That's not bad at all. Let's see if we can leave now. Just pop there. And let's get this guy. He can get in and they're plenty happy. Let's pop you back. Now let's come up north. I want to deal with them. We'll have to go through that unit. So we'll have to kill them to start with and then move on to them. That's going to be a tall order, my friends. A real tall order. This is actually a relatively decent city. It's got the river ports. It's got an Odeon. Temple of Dionysus is a great temple to have too. So, yeah, a relatively good city, all told. So, uh, yeah, not bad. I do really want to take Bessapara, though, because it has gold mines. Uh, I don't think Demetrios here does. Let's have a look. No, no mining there, but you see here, gold mines. We want to take those because that's an easy 2,500 gold that we can afford to build. We've got now got loads of cash because we lost a whole army. <laughs> so I think what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll end the episode here, guys, with our race to the north. No, actually, we'll do one more turn and then we'll see where we get to. We probably won't do any of the actions on the next turn, but we'll do our building and go through that. So let's go from the top again. Means the middle people don't get as much, but uh, <sighs> it's fine for now. Um, Pasaran over here. What can Pasaran actually train? Like, literally nothing. Is there any point of Pasaran then? How much does this... 24 for a building that costs 10,000. <laughs> that is pointless. <laughs> so let's go for the paved roads instead. 130. It's not good, but it's okay. Uh, Kokira over here. Uh... Yeah, apparently apparently these roads give nothing. <laughs> so what's the point of them? <laughs> Literally pointless. Why would we ever build them? Um, let's have a look. Let's go for the public baths then in Kokira. Expensive buildings now, a lot of these. What do we have here? Kikiros. Yeah, 500 from that. That's absolutely worth it. Why do you keep doing that? Let's have a look. We're at Dodona now. Really low population growth in Dodona. So let's try and bump that up. Let's go for that. Pharsalos, let's start building the army barracks in here so we can keep on training good troops there. Thebi Pathiotides. Let's have a look uh, at whether this is worth it. 86, which is 66. It's worth it in the end. It's going to keep adding up, isn't it, my friends? Lucas, pointless to build there. Let's have a look. Demetrias, relatively decent city. 76 for the paved roads. I mean, the paved roads are going to help moving our troops through our lands as well. So I don't m mind building them, even though they are expensive. Especially in these places like Demetrias. Uh, maybe not Demetrias, actually, but like Dion, where we a lot of troops go through Dion. It's definitely worth popping those in there. Larissa in here. Anything we can build. We can build the shrine to Dioscuri. Definitely, because we are training um, those guys. We want that experience. And we are training in all the areas that we want to. Good. Good. Fantastic, in fact. How come about training up here? Not really anything too good to train up here. So, yeah. Stoby. 
uh, Bylazora. Bylazora, we can get some Thracian Slingers, who are actually a good Slinger unit, but we don't need any Slingers right now, guys, do we? So let's end the turn there, guys, and let's see where we get to. So Pionia wants to become a Protectorate if we basically give them all their land back. I mean, <laughs> absolutely not for that. <laughs> Uh, we'll offer ceasefire, become a protector, accept, or we will attack. Do not take us no. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we cannot get to that army. We do not have the movement points. It's probably because it's become winter now. Oh, that's slightly annoying. But what we can do is try to scam the AI by destroying their faction. <gasps> and we can assault. Do we have a... We don't have an agent. They must have damaged walls. Very damaged walls. <gasps> Wow, what do they have in there? They've got a single unit. Well, let's make these guys rebels, shall we? Bang, let's enslave. And goodbye, Pionia. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Pionia, you are an embarrassment, my friends. You didn't see that one coming, did you? Oh, dear. Wow, awful. Awful gameplay from the AI there, but you know what? We'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> you saw how strong those Thracians were, and we still have plenty, plenty of uh, of battles to do uh, up here in the north. I feel like, do we go for the Denthalate? Is that their only settlement? If that is their only settlement, that is the uh, the play, I think. I don't even mind taking Sir Dicker here, too. Do they have mines? No, so it is a bit of a pointless settlement. What is this? Is this Trebali? That is the Trebalians. So we already have a border with Trabali. Don't really want to come up into this land up here. Um, I'd rather stay around the mountains up here. Uh, but you, yeah, you are supposed to go. And um, we can actually, we can actually escape now with this damaged army. Well, let's get rid. I mean, these guys would be great fort garrisons, so we'll keep them here for now. Uh, I do want to build some watchtowers in, in this area, just so that we can actually see what's going on without having to have about a million spies. So let's uh, pop that one in there. That's actually a really good watchtower. Wow. Uh, I'd love one down here too, but where are our borders? It goes there. I think it goes up that way, doesn't it? So let's come along here. Where is the border? It is there. Let's pop a watchtower in there too. Actually, no, let's pop it in off the road. Because if, in case you don't know, guys, the road, uh, the rebels love, 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 love to stand by watchtowers. So uh, let's see if we can pop one more in over this way. That allows us vision over there. And that's given us a lot of vision. So very happy with that. You guys need to come down all the way back to Fenike, probably. Or Pella, actually. No, we can actually retrain in Pella now, can't we? Let's have a look. What can we train in Pella? Yes, we can pretty much train everything. So let's pop one of those in. Let's go for the Hippodrome next, too. And, yeah, we're retraining those. You need to go up and join with them. And this army, what do we do here, then? Let's have a look. Damastion. Go. Actually, pretty happy without anyone in there. This is where I'd love to stick one of these guys in. What about a Thracian Noble Cavalry? Because we can't actually retrain. That's just a mercenary. 68% with a 7-man garrison. Let's take that, definitely. We want to stay away from these plagued areas. These guys have got the plague. But there was no plague in there. There must be a plague spot. Oh, this guy's got the plague. That's why. Oh, dear. That's not ideal. I don't want to give the plague back to Pella. <laughs> the, the question is, what do we do with these rebel armies? Do we go and deal with them? Or do we just chill and try to avoid them? We will have to deal with them at some point. I mean, we saw how comprehensively they absolutely destroyed us last time. So, you know what? We will do that battle next turn. I think it, which army was the one that destroyed us last time? Can't remember. We'll do that because we can actually retrain all of these units apart from the Zistaphore and Pella. And I think we've got a much stronger army here. So we'll do that next uh, next time. Um, but let's see. That could be an absolute disaster again. There's, there's definitely uh, a good chance of that. Uh, Ifestionis is now wealthy. He has been risen from the ranks, this man. I love this man. 
What a man he is. Risen from the ranks he has come. So let's uh, ignore that for now. You're going into Cassandrea over there. So Ifestionas is going to deal with them. Yeah, now we've only got two armies, haven't we? That's the problem here. What's in there? We'll do that next time, probably. Opening. And yeah, I hope you're not too upset with me cheesing, <laughs> cheesing the Bionians, but... If they're going to, you know, leave their settlements open like that, I'm not going to, you know, ignore it. We are still going to fight that army, as you can see. You know, we're not just going to leave that one. We might leave this one because they do have a rebel settlement up north that they may go and chill in. Or they may just go and chill by that watchtower, which would be great for us, to be honest. Really good. <laughs> so, yes. And we're going to do that next time, too. So, let's have a look at what we can build. Let's go for Antigonia Chionia again. And, no, let's go to some of these middle settlements, because we haven't built in these for a little while. Probably starting from Bakiria. Bakiria, let's go for those paved roads again in there. Edessa, Botitia, not the richest settlement in the world. I would like the Shrine to Aphrodite. There we go, that's good. Uh, Acanthos over here, definitely a shipwright is going to be the option there. Very nice indeed. Thessalonica doesn't have that much to build, really. Let's go for that so we can try and get it up to a uh, large city quicker. Uh, and then Demale all the way over there. We don't have a general in there, so it's not really worth anything. So let's leave that for now. Lycnidos over here, too, is not exactly the richest settlement. It's not terrible, either. Uh, I mean, paved roads is not that useful here. Neither's, you know, pop, uh, population growth, because it's already got quite a lot. Oinadai is a better settlement to build in, definitely. Let's get the academy in there while we've got a guy there. And then anywhere else that we can just build, like, a nice little temple for nice and cheap. We can build the shrine to Dioscuri in, in Damali. Let's do that, because it's on 71%, just in case. Well, guys, I think we're going to leave it there. So we've got two battles to do at the start of next episode, which should be... Nice and fun. <laughs> I'm hoping this battle we fare a little bit better than we did last time. This one, I can't... I think this is the other army. But this is all just Peltasts. <laughs> the Peltast army, my friends. So we are going to have to try and corner them. I'm scared that we're going to be on a bridge battle. Which may, you know, be not good. Uh, I wonder whether we can force them to cross the river. Or we can do what we did to the Nabataeans in our other uh, in our rodian campaign ah we should be we should be training more thracians well that'll allow us to uh synchronize all of these training areas in one which will be good for us so let's do that instead we'll synchronize them all and in umbrakia we'll go i'll have a look at pyros himself where is pyros does he have any bad traits because of that battle now like unlucky leader or something like that he's hardened now which is good rationing uh weak chin this man is cursed with a weakling's countenance oh uh, popular general no he's actually a very good general so we will keep him archon of idava no unlucky leader there we go minus one command minus one influence but he gets morale from that been in wars so yeah he's got some really good traits actually lots of movement points good morale Good for night battle and trade and taxes. He's good for as well. Combat versus Gallic. He's good. Hit points and valor. Yeah, he's a good. He's a really good general still, even after that massive defeat. So a glorious, glorious episode, my friends. I hope you have enjoyed, guys. If you did enjoy, a like and a subscribe would be massively appreciated as usual, guys. So thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure as always, and I will see you all again on the next video.